Judy Lippard, lifelong supporter, critic, cheerleader, and friend, gave a final piece of advice to her husband, the man whose decades of tireless research would profoundly deepen our understanding of a class of drugs that would save thousands from the very disease from which she suffered. Become a more well-rounded person. But at 74, Stephen Lippert possesses a certain edge, resistant to the rounding effects of time, an insatiable drive to become an expert at, well, everything. I took piano for 11 years. 16th century, 17th century English literature. I taught horseback riding, and I loved the oboe. I decided, okay, let's see about medicine. I became an Elizabethan scholar. I wanted to be a brain surgeon. Throughout his career in bioinorganic chemistry, he'd wield this edge like a surgeon wields a scalpel, dissecting the microscopic world to give us some of our clearest pictures, solving complex processes such as the one by which bacterial enzymes convert methane and oxygen to fuel, a process which people may one day employ to create alternative forms of energy. But one line of research would occupy him far more than others. I would love to cure one person of cancer before I leave the planet. It was called cisplatin, a platinum molecule that was somehow causing cells to self-destruct by interacting with DNA. Cancer cells copy themselves because faulty DNA tells them to. Cisplatin was somehow stopping this message from being transmitted. This was big news. The problem? Nobody knew exactly how cisplatin worked. Understanding this process could open the door for the creation of a powerful new class of anti-cancer drugs. Lippert accepted the challenge, but had little to go on until a paper by Alan Eastman suggested he look to a cellular process called transcription. DNA, the molecule of life, contains a master plan for building the various systems of a cell and the process by which it delivers these instructions is called transcription. And to see it, we have to go small, really, really small, down to the width of a hair, and then 50,000 times smaller. Ah, there's our DNA, and it's about to create a special kind of copy of one of its strands. This happens here. This newly transcribed strand is called messenger RNA and it contains instructions critical to protein production and the continued existence of the cell. Block transcription and the cell will die. A desirable outcome in the fight against cancer cells. Determining how cisplatin might interfere with transcription would empower scientists and doctors with the ability to develop revolutionary new treatments for cancer. Lippard tasked himself with exactly just that. But determining what transpires at molecular scales isn't easy. Even with powerful microscopes, scientists can't simply watch such processes unfold. Lippard would spend years in the U.S. and abroad studying, making himself an expert in many different fields of chemistry and medicine. Once armed with the necessary knowledge and tools, he designed innovative experiments, produced new ways to screen certain drugs for effectiveness in fighting cancer, and developed a near-complete visualization of cisplatin in action. Now keep in mind, folks, Lippert wasn't able to just look through a microscope and watch this process unfold. The visualization you're about to see is derived completely from the results of creative experiments that would take years to design and then many more to actually perform. When a cisplatin molecule approaches a DNA molecule, a chemical bonding takes place. Certain nitrogen atoms in DNA are a better chemical fit for the cisplatin molecules than its own two chlorine atoms. The cisplatin atoms jettison these and bonds to the DNA like this, creating a kink in the double helix. This kink attracts a protein called HMG, which wedges itself into the cross-linked portion of the strand. These conditions prevent transcription and trigger a natural process called programmed cell death or apoptosis that leads to the death of the cell. In other words, this is how some tumors shrink and cancers are cured. Lippert's findings show us precisely how this molecule, when delivered to cancer cells, effectively stops their reproduction, knowledge that carries profound implications for the field of cancer research for decades to come. Lippert's discoveries would lead to the refinement and creation of cancer drugs in use today. Thousands would live because of Lippert's passion. But while platinum-containing medicines have saved hundreds of thousands of lives, 
Lippard believes that a very, very small percentage of the population could be adversely affected by platinum-containing treatments. In these patients, tumor growth is encouraged rather than suppressed. Judy Lippard was one of them. Shortly after giving her husband her words of wisdom become more well-rounded, Judy Lippard passed away. Lippard lives now abiding by her advice, playing music, visiting with his grandchildren, but his passion still burns. Listening to a Nobel scientist talk to the media, he was asked by the interviewer, what, Professor X, was your best experiment? Within two milliseconds, he gave the answer, which was exactly my answer, which was my next experiment.